This is a Chateau Sport that we've already got the bunk out. It's uh, actually sitting over here. It's all rotted. You see all this here, so we've got to replace that. I'm going to draw back a little bit. Then we've got some other damage on the other side. And this is pretty typical of these Class C's. But you can see like right in here, all behind the siding. If I can have to weasel in there, but it's all rotted up in there. You can you can see it up in there. Same on the other side. You can also look at the the panel itself. You can see that it's all delaminated behind there on that panel. And then uh, over here. So obviously we are going to rebuild this bunk. We're not going to be putting in the window though. He uh, requested to take the window out. So now I'm going to go up there and we'll take a look at the roof, but it's going to be your typical roof. I'm sure there's a uh, moron, moron. <laughs> Let me go up there and take a look at it. Well, there you have it. Wow. It is, that's insane. I've never seen, look how thick that. Oh, wow. <laughs> that looked like a heck of a weld there. No kidding. That is super shot. That's a, that's a hole right there. Let's see if I get a knife. That, that is some moron. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the moron moron award right there. That is some crazy stuff. That is really, let's see, that's about an inch that way. And probably a good three quarters that way. Look how they mounted all this up here. And they, even though they put it on here, see, it's not going to stick. A lot of this doesn't stick. It'll peel right out of there, which is a plus side for us to get that off. But this is a uh, what's called a fleece back roof. Wow, there's a big hole right here. There's nothing in there. That's the roofing, and that's the inside of the coach. There's no ceiling, nothing. Okay, but this is a fleece back. Uh -huh. I thought it was all right in there. See that is kind of that's a fleece on the on the back side. That's why they call it fleece back. It wasn't really a not really good thought in that. It's just simple thought. Like I said, they just keep slathering more on, more on, on the, around all of this stuff. So we're gonna peel this roof up, and um, and this is it looks like it's a TPO roof. Well, that's not the end of the world. You know, like the uh, some of the stuff that we've seen. I don't know what we're doing with the back on there. But um, you see we got some DLAM under here. So even though this is a TPO roof, it's not the same TPO that we use. This is uh, RV grade. RV grade is kind of like, um, let's see how I can, can kind of analyze this or give you an analogy. Um, it would be like Chevy Chevette. I know Chevrolet made the Chevette. Nobody talks about it. It is a car. It qualifies as one. <laughs> That's about the best I could say, I guess. But it's all the... Uh, it's just a low budget. You can't weld to it. You can't do it. You'll burn right through this. So, but also we got DLAM. So we're gonna have to fix this, and then we're gonna have to check out what we're gonna do in the ceiling. Then uh, we just uh, you can see we got most of this already covered, anyways. So you to watch the look for the stitching on some of these. You can see how dry it is. Sometimes they'll just start coming apart. So you gotta watch that. Uh, we're gonna protect it, but the uh, It'll start wearing down. Then if you uh, have on your coach, if you look right here in the corner, especially on EPDM rubber, it'll fracture out and you'll start seeing little slits. Uh, those little slits are going to be chronic leaks. And um, those chronic leaks will get down inside the wall. So that's a, that, this is a TPO I'm talking about on a EPDM, a rubber roof. You'll see it fracture. It looks like tiny, tiny little cracks in it. I call it egg shelling because it looks a lot like you know you when you crack a hard-boiled egg so they've got this run down over here but if you have one of these boots type that come down through the base right here then you're gonna need to get that sealed uh, you want to put some caulking in there and then get that sealed so but that's about us right now we're gonna start getting this thing off of here and um, there isn't much on here we got one vent you got a, an antenna we're gonna be removing that totally just an air conditioner and then the couple of vents there and that skylight that skylight is huge I don't know why it's so big 
Yeah, it looks like it looks like a basin that someone found and turned upside down. That's what it looks like. <laughs> but I can't get over how much slobber is on here. That's that there is funny. All right, onward and upward. Right. So we've got this is a hole. This whole thing in the bathroom is all rotted. When I tried to show you the cut, what it was soft. It wasn't soft. There was nothing in there. Someone has already tried to uh, do some repairs on this. So what we're doing now is getting all the loose D lamb up. This uh, ply foam roof. So there's your ceiling right here. That's your ceiling piece. This is your foam. This is a top pack. That's all there is to it. So we'll um, we got to redeck it. But the uh, get around here. You see all this stuff down here. It's all rotted. So we're going to take all this up. But somebody has already monkeyed with it. They tried to put in another sheet right here to redo this bunk. This isn't stuff. This is supposed to be white. Someone already tried to work on it, you know. So this is all the rot I was trying to show you earlier, right here. You can see the way they tried to glue it in. It, it just did not fare well. So now we're uh, going to strip all that and then we'll redeck it all. Okay, so we have this steel plate in here that's going to carry our uh, ladder when the ladder comes on. So we got something to mount to. But you can't screw it to eighth inch and you can't screw it to foam. Contrary to what the manufacturer does, uh, you really can't. It comes off. Anyhow, so we're going to fix that piece over there. We're going to, on the interior, I think we're just going to put a, uh, an aluminum panel, break something up, put a new ceiling in there instead of tearing the whole thing apart, ripping someone's wallet apart unnecessarily. So these strips here, they come together when our plywood's going to sit here. Another one sit there. It just helps marry them together. we got to glue it all down. And then uh, we got, we put some camera on it. I don't know if you can, probably can't notice it. But anyhow, look at this all basically aluminum rust hence oxidation so we're going to put a steel plate over that we're going to span it way over and carry some strength on there to fix that mess and uh but that's what we're trying to do but at least we we were able to attain some arch and that's what we we're trying to do so when we put our decking on and everything and glue it down it'll stay uh, so we taxed it out pretty good he got about an inch rise off it which is pretty well and then uh that antenna we're looking for and all that stuff, so we'll, we'll get it together. All right, here's our bunk, and uh, we get it all laid out. We built a new one over here, a new platform. This, um, this platform is, even if we did use it, it's really hard to get something to fasten to this, even if you staple it. That's one problem that I have with it. The other problem is, which, you know, I get this piece loose off of here. Oh, uh, I did it over here. So, see, there's a piece that goes in here, from here to here. With all the junk I got on my bench. This is the piece. Bring it back so you can see. And what they did is they put a snot weld on this thing. That's all they did. It's just a little tack weld. They had it here. And all you have to do is just twist it out. So there's no strength in it. There's no strength in it at all. That's why I don't like aluminum frames. See the little weld right there? That's it. And when you oppose this this way back against itself, it will break. Although this one runs all the way down, it's, this one is too well for this one. But that's what happened. You can see the weld is right there. There's the weld for that piece that I just showed you. And the other one is right over here somewhere. Hopefully I can show you there. So the same with this one. So they're all kind of just tacked. They call these tack welds. I call them snot welds. But um, there's not not enough strength in it. And it's just cheap alloy anyway. So all that combined, and then look at the distance you have from here. That's a pretty big span from there. There's nothing in the center here, nothing in the center there. So that's a pretty big span on this on this particular bunk, the way they designed it. Shut that radio off. They, uh, anyhow, so what we did on this one is I added more in here. You can see all the... There's a piece right in here, there's a piece in here, there's a piece in there, and then I crisscross them. Actually, uh, put a, uh, a half lap dado joint on it to give it some strength. If anybody knows what that is, show you my little design. Everything's all glued. These are pocket screws that go in. They're also, we staple them just to hold them in place, and then we everything's all glued in there. So, you can see how I made all that grid pattern. This is going to be, you know, shaken, and the way this this design of this one is a little different from some other ones, and that's why, you know, all the stuff I do, I want to see what's different about this one than the other one we're working on there. Um, it, there, the span is different in here, meaning from the 
the interior where you actually go in that's a little different and also the length is a little different so there there are some variables and that's what you got to consider when you build all this stuff so but anyway, I just wanted to show you when people say, oh, I like aluminum, it's great. No, it's not. I would rather have a, a wood frame one. I really would. Uh, I really would. Wood. Yeah. Wood, wood. Really? Nothing there either. These aren't welded. They're just, they're just, like I said, there's nothing on here either. See, there's the other side. And there's nothing on the top. Is there a weld there? Nope. There's no weld there either. There's just that tiny little weld up underneath there. So if you took this, i get my hand in there. You could literally, you can twist this apart. See, it just come right apart. Ta-da! Look at there. Drive down the road. He falls out. Nah, I wouldn't fall out that way, but but that's what causes it to shake apart. You know. It, again, that's why we don't use it. Good example. All right, onward and upward. This is our chateau update. So this whole panel, all the way to that end of the blue tape there, all the way down. That's that's all rotted. And we had to take the whole back wall off. That was all rotted. So we you know we just skinned all the D lam off. And we also got the roof deck. So that's where we're at so far. Now all we're doing is cleaning this up. This really needs to have some sort of strength underneath it. The this is not fiberglass. A lot of people say, hey, I got a fiberglass coach. It's not really fiberglass. What Phylon is, is plastic with fiberglass resins in it, you know, the strands rather. That's what it is. And that's why it wrinkles so bad when it gets delaminated. If it doesn't have something solid to sit behind it and keep it tight, then when the sun hits it, it starts to wrinkle up. So, on the back here, you know, the radius comes over, but it really should have something on there. So we'll probably put a piece of sheet metal or something on there to give it some strength and uh, just keep it tight and glue it back in that way. But uh, some of the framing is already rotted on here that we got to fix. Some of the framing down here on the light, you can see that's all rotted. So we got to get that fixed. And see that come over here. Yep. That light too, that's all rotted. And we'll check that bottom piece down there that runs across. We're going to check that. But like I said, there's a lot of rot on here. A little bit of work to get this all cleaned back up. Okay, so we had all the foam on there. And then um, there's certain adhesive that won't stick to this, but nonetheless, um, we took a piece off here, and this is still wet back here. That's still wet. You can see the color difference. So we're going to take all the foam off to make sure everything is all done. Then we're going to put new foam in there, and then we'll put it all together. But it doesn't make sense when you got water trapped inside that foam. So we're going to get it all cleaned up. Okay, so we're getting the back all together. And uh, you can see we got all the insulation. So once we put the insulation in, we glued this into the wall for the interior wall. And then we also use an adhesive foam to bond to each side. Now we're getting, obviously, this is a skin for it. And we put some new framing around here on the other light over there. We did that as well. And that's what we're trying to do. We get some more adhesive on here. And uh, we're going to get this stuccoified. That's what we call it, stuccoified. Then up front, what we got going on... We get some of the bunk put together here on the outside. We get that. And then what we did, I'll have to walk around this way a little bit. We got all new foam and everything in there. And then uh, you can see all the foam adhesive we got in there. Then we reinforced it on the, there's gusset plates that we reinforced on there. And also, like right here, we reinforced them there. And then uh, on the opposite side of it as well. So we also did it on, on this one here, but you can't really see it right there. It's on the other side of this one. You can barely see the you can barely see the piece coming out on that side. So uh, the only other thing we're doing now is just grinding down some of the screw heads because that's 16 gauge steel. And some of this is just real soft. It's low alloy. You can we wire brushed it all down, cleaned it all down, and then you can see obviously we put new insulation in there. That's a commercial grade insulation. And then uh, we reframe the window over here, so we got all that. And then um, what we're going to do next is uh, get the new skins. We get new skins to go on the inside. So we'll get those on there. And then this is just on this edge right here. We inspected it. So we're not going to tear the whole ceiling out for that and just tear apart a wallet. There's no mold. There's no rot. It, it's just it's just basically dry rot. There's uh, and it's only for a little bit. And then we got some trim and everything going on there, and we'll get it all back together. But I hate tearing apart a wallet for something so small that it's not going to matter, you know, and make a big difference. 
If it was, of course, I'd fix it. But uh, so that's where we are so far with all this mess. And then uh, you can see well, we, what we did is uh, with those jacks is we overstressed the roof. We overstressed it so we put our when we put our sheet on there, we get the camber that we want. And then after it's all cured, it's cured now. We could take them out, but then it would have to fight itself to go back to be flat because uh, we just wanted to get just a little bit of camber. I think we got about one inch a camber on there. That's what I was trying for. At least when we overstretched it, it did. So if it comes back to even, you know, three quarter or half, I'll be happy with that. You know, even if it come back to level and wasn't going anywhere, that's still okay. So that's where we are so far. We still got to fix that back corner around there uh, that we're working on. All as well. right, we got our passenger side that's already done we've already got this all glued we got our protective strips in there everything's all done now all we're doing now is just rolling the roof out you ready but uh we're gonna get the big roller on here we're gonna pack her down there she go now we get the big heavy roller wherever it went I'm looking for it Boy, probably in another bay. We're gonna get that over here. We're gonna roll her out. So now we're just gonna roll her down. Pack her down. That's how you get a good bond. All right, we're done with our chateau. We got to charge up the battery. Oh, we got our new bunk on there. Everybody was going kind of. Uh, pretty good at a good pace and I wasn't able to get all the videos up on there But you, we rebuilt the whole radius and underneath that radius and, and the platform There's a piece of sheet metal that wraps all that and the same with the top all that we put some new lights in there as well Those are LED lights uh, new ones we put in so uh, Let's go up top take a look at the roof. We got all this done back here Everything's all put together back together and then we had some issues the part of the reason why this thing had failed is because the radius wasn't proper so we had to fill that in with some epoxy right there on the corner and the same on the other side but that contributed to some of the issues the radius wasn't the same so you can see we got all this together back wall everything's all done everything's all sealed all done probably be a good idea to shut that door and um but uh there's our there's our stamp on there december of 21 so we put that on there so now everybody knows when it was done if he ever goes to sell this I want somebody trying to talk them down and uh, say, oh, well, these RV roofs are known to fail. You know, hey, I just put that thing on December 21. So, uh, and I also want to take the time to thank uh, the customer for bringing the coach to us. We really appreciate the work. So, all right, let me show you. So you can see we got all the curves and everything all in here. Everything's all done. We got the stands on the back of the AC right there. It just gives it some balance. There's also a piece of counter flash out front. I'll show you all that in a minute. But um, this here... And if you, I, these aren't necessarily DIY videos, they're not. And I say that because there's a lot of steps we do that I don't show. And I don't want anybody getting upset saying, hey, you know, I saw it this way and that way and so forth and it failed or whatever. There's a lot of steps and processes that we go through to make sure everything comes together. And there's certain materials and products that we use to make sure they're all compatible. All right, all that said, this here, the skylight, when we put these on, we glue them down. Glue them down. I can't tell you how many of these that I've seen come in just with, and you probably have them too there and they'll crack They'll crack right here and they'll fracture and I've drilled them out and they just it, these expand and contract too much They just the screws when they're in there If you don't get them dead center and get enough space in there when it expands It'll start fracturing just a slight bit. You probably won't even see it until you do see it, right? So I just said the heck with that. I don't even do it anymore. No screws. We just glue them down solely glue them down so what this is is a ventilation system that I designed inside this lens and the inner lens there's an there's a gap in there of course but when the condensation sits on this in the morning it's also on the underside and the inside the Sun will come up and evaporate off of here but it won't do it to the inside and what happens is that condensation will start rolling and when it does the ceiling panel will wick it up and actually when we first started the video you saw all that rot and that probably contributed to it so what I did is designed up a ventilation system and there's a trough in here for this. If this pops off, you definitely want to get something in there. We put the, uh, another a piece of foam in here, it's perforated foam so it can breathe, but at the same point, I, I don't want wasps getting in there. So, but if, like I said, if this pops off, you definitely need to get um, some tape on it or something for sure. And we leave a care package that has some tape in it. Um, anyhow, that trough goes through here and then that's a an exhaust fan solar fan 
So now when the sun comes up and it's evaporating the condensation off of here, it's evaporating, that'll kick on and it'll give a constant airflow up over the inner shell and the air will keep going. So I recommend parking this where the sun can get it because those work off of sunlight. Uh, that other one's just plumbing. That's all that is. But this whole contraption, <laughs> all that you see, this, 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 this going all around, that is one curb that I had to design. And I'll tell you, that was a little bit of work for sure. So we got that one on there. You got the covers on there. You really should be putting covers on if you don't have them because I have seen time and time again where you're just going down the road, but the wind that goes over the vent over the cover will just start to give it a little bit of vibration and then it starts opening up <laughs> now you got them open and you don't even realize it so those boots over there for the ladder and the other thing we do with the ladder when we take a ladder off when we take a ladder off we make sure all the screws and everything are all tight all the way down we do all that because it, some of them most of the time are loose and if they're rusted then we're going to change it all out and put new there's a special nut that goes in those tubes that connect your outrigs if you will the, uh, <clears throat> there's special nuts in there and then but if the screws are all loose we put some uh, Loctite on there and tighten her all back up so uh, obviously we went around we sealed all these lights sealed around the window double striked all the way down here we got everything all squared away like that so uh, you, no matter how much we clean it we've already cleaned this thing twice but uh, got, still got some dust and everything on here you can see we got the new that's a Weingard 8500 it's an automatic antenna and when you turn it on it'll spin inside there and load all the channels for you so we put special mounts on there and then all you have to do if if that ever fails is take those uh, nuts off of there now I use 3 8 I bore them out they come with 7 16 and I drill them out and put 3 8 mounts on there so that's gonna be a 9 16 bolt so you take those off unscrew that coax and then pop that right off you can go get a new one um, on this side over here this is a counter flash that I put in when the rain comes down this way, I don't. The, up underneath here is a foam gasket, and I don't want the water just come that comes down here with the wind blowing, getting back into that foam gasket. So this counter flash goes up underneath this lid, so the water comes down and it has to trickle below our counter flash that we built into the curb. So once we get all that, that water will just wash right out. So that's the purpose of that. But otherwise, we're all done. Uh, everything's ready to go, and uh, she's ready to go camping in i guess so like i said these aren't diy videos um also uh we don't quote on social media so if you're you know looking if you're interested in having a quote put in there then you know you're gonna have to give us a call at 423-475-7663 and uh give us a call or so you can send us an email contact us at rvroofinstall.com and we'll be glad to respond to you but we don't quote anything on social media and I have some people who ask that, hey, how much does this cost, that cost? And you can see all the work we did on the back wall. So it varies. I don't know what y'all got going on with your coach. So it's hard to just go, oh, it costs this much, that much, this much. So anyhow, we appreciate y'all watching and look out for the next one.